Hello, welcome to Living English. Today, we'll learn some more about how to talk about the past. We'll learn how to say that something has not happened and to ask about things that have happened. But first, here's the next episode of our drama. Remember, in the last episode, Anne had a message from John Barber, the private investigator. His message said he had some news. Today, Anne has gone to see John. Have you found my brother? Uh, not, not yet. Uh, no. Uh, well, not quite. But I have found something. What is it? I went to the university. You said he was a student. I spoke to his professor, the head of the course he studied. And what did he say? Does he know what happened? Well, no, not exactly. Uh, he didn't know where your brother went. But he told me David had left the university. He stopped going to lectures. <laughs> when did he stop? Oh, about a year ago. He didn't tell anyone. But he left a letter with the professor. A letter? Have you got it? Where is it? it? The professor has it. He wouldn't give it to me because it was addressed to you. He left his, ah, his card. I'll go and see him. Thank you. Oh, I, I found out something else. Yes? Your brother had a girlfriend. Really? He didn't tell me. Who is she? Well, I don't know yet. But I'm sure I can find her. We're closing in, Miss Lee. Uh, fear not. Thank you. I'm sure they'll find Anne's brother in the future. Today, we're going to talk about the past. To talk about the past, we use words of action called verbs. See if you can hear the five verbs John uses to talk about past actions. I went to the university. You said he was a student. I spoke to his professor, the head of the course he studied. The five verbs used to show that the past is being talked about are went, said, was, spoke, and studied. We've looked at the past tense before on Living English. One way of changing verbs so that they refer to the past is to add a d sound, spelled ed. Study becomes studied. Notice that with words that end with a y, the y is changed to an i when id is added. Many of the verbs we use all of the time don't have id added to them. They're called irregular past tenses. See if you can hear one in this clip. I spoke to his professor. Spoke. I'm speaking to you now, and I spoke to you before about irregular past tenses. Practice saying it with the clip. I spoke to his professor. Some irregular verbs have a past tense that is very different from the present tense, such as the verb go. To talk about the future, we say that we will go somewhere. And to talk about now, we say that we are going somewhere. What do we say about the past? Listen. I went to the university. John went to the university. The past tense of go is went. Now listen for the past tense of say. Said he was a student. Said is the past tense of say. There are other ways of talking about the past where the verb doesn't change. Listen to Anne asking about the past without using the past tense of say. And what did he say? She uses the word did. What did he say? Did is the past tense of do. 
Did is a type of verb that's used with other verbs. In questions such as, what did he say? The word did is used to ask about the past with another verb such as say. But we don't use the past tense of that verb. We say, what did he say? Not, what did he said? What did he say? Let's try guessing the questions to some answers. If he went to the university is the answer. The question is, where did he go? OK, what's the question for this? He said nothing. What? What did he say? He went that way. Where? Where did he go? She studied drama. What? What did she study? Now listen to the past tense of stopped change to stop in the same way when Anne uses did in a question. He stopped going to lectures. When did he stop? Try saying it with them. He stopped going to lectures. When did he stop? Stopped is the past tense of stop. But in a question about the past, we use did with stop. When did he stop? In the next clip, listen to John use the past tense of tell, told. He told me David had left the university. Now listen to this. He didn't tell anyone. Didn't is the short way of saying did not. He did not tell anyone. No one was told. This negative form of did, did not or didn't, also makes past tenses. If we're talking about the past, we say, I told you. But the negative is, I did not tell you. Both of these phrases are talking about the past. Did not or didn't is like ed on the end of verbs or irregular past tense forms such as told. I told you. I didn't tell you. Now you try some. I said it. I didn't. I didn't say it. I went away. I didn't. I didn't go away. I studied drama. I didn't. I didn't study drama. Try saying didn't tell with John. He didn't tell anyone. Now listen to Anne using didn't when talking about the past. Your brother had a girlfriend. Really? He didn't tell me. It's time to say hello to Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Brenton. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to look at words such as didn't that are really two words said together very quickly. These words are called contractions. Listen carefully to what John says when Anne asks him who her brother's girlfriend is. Well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure I can find her. There were two contractions in that clip. What were they, Brenton? Don't and I'm. Don't is short for do not, and I'm is the contraction of I am. Let's listen in the next clip for the contraction of did not. He didn't know where your brother went. What's the contraction of did not? Didn't. Try saying it with the clip. He didn't know where your brother went. Now listen for the contraction of would not. He wouldn't give it to me because it was addressed to you. What's the contraction of would not? Wouldn't. Now it's your turn. What's the contraction of could not? Couldn't. 
What's the contraction of does not? Doesn't. What's the contraction of was not? Wasn't. What's the contraction of is not? Isn't. We always shorten not to nt, but sometimes we change the way we say the first word. Will not becomes won't. Do not becomes don't. Listen to John say, I don't know, and then say it with him. Well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure I can find it. Well, I don't know yet, but I'm sure I can find it. You've probably noticed that these contractions have apostrophes. Now, Brenton, the contraction of I am is I'm. Where do you put the apostrophe? Well, that's easy. Between the I and the M. What's the apostrophe for? To show that a sound is missing. I am, I'm. The at sound is missing. Now listen for two more contractions. He wouldn't give it to me because it was addressed to you. The two contractions are wouldn't and it's. What's the missing sound in wouldn't? The missing sound is o. Oh. Would not, wouldn't. So the apostrophe goes between the N and the T. What is it's short for? It's is the contraction of it is. So the apostrophe comes between the T and the S. Now listen for another contraction. We're closing in, Miss Lee. Uh, fear not. We're. What's the missing sound in we're? The missing sound is a. Uh. We're, we are. We learnt quite a lot today. Now you know that if you ask about an action in the past, you use did and the usual form of the verb, like this. Did you enjoy today's program? Yes, I enjoyed it. Did you? Yes, I did too. On our next program, we'll be talking about giving advice and finding out what an adverb is.